Hey Cloud Gamers and welcome to the Cloud Gaming Stream Channel. We've got some exciting news for those in Europe. We're going to be reviewing a service called Trezorio today. This is a pay per hour service based in France. Now if you have been using Shadow then your ping to France is probably quite good already. However, if you're not used to the pay per hour model, you do need to check your settings carefully here. Obviously you can go a little bit overboard as you saw there. For three and a half euros an hour, you could have 32 virtual CPUs as well as 128 gigs of RAM and also up to four terabytes of storage with potentially four RTX 4000s. But to be honest, that's more than overkill for what you're going to be using this for. So let's start with a base machine here of 12 vCPUs, 32 gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of storage and one RTX 4000. That will come out around 77 euro cents an hour, which equates to just around 90 cents in the US. Now, something to note is that Trezorio partners with something called Remo, which is a virtual PC software similar to Moonlight or more like Parsec really, which is quite an interesting little RDP piece of software which is hooked in automatically. All you have to do is create a free account and then put in your private key. Once you start up your machine, you get instant RDP access through any browser. So let's have a look at the machine itself here. You can see that we've got the 12 virtual CPUs there and we've got the RTX 4000. Internet wise, we've got 677 download and also 600 upload. So we've got a match download and upload. I chose a UK server here, so just from the base machine, we're looking at a 17 millisecond ping. But you'll also see from Remo that with the decode, we've actually got around a 30 millisecond latency. So it's not too bad. We're getting quite a good ping here from the UK to the servers in France. Let's have a look at that virtual processor. We can see that it's an AMD EPYC processor. And because it's got those 12 virtual CPUs, we're getting a good benchmark around six and a half thousand there, which is pretty good considering some of the actual physical CPUs that we've been testing previously. Something to note about Trezorio is that even if your machine is off, you will be charged for the storage. Now, the best guess that we can find on the storage prices here is if you have a dedicated bucket for one terabyte, it's gonna cost you around a base price of 10 euros a month. Because I chose 500 gig, we can assume that's going to cost at least five euros a month just for me to have that machine, even if I don't turn it on. What they do say is that you can archive the machine to save space and save storage, which I guess moves it to lower storage. And that seems to be costing me around 10 euro cents a day in archive. So that's going to be around three to six euros a month for the archived storage. So be aware that there is a base storage there and it does warn you about this when you turn the machine off so that you aren't caught by surprise when you're still using credits even though you're not using the machine. Now the Remo software does also support a virtual gamepad which is through this nefarious virtual gamepad software however when I did install this it did not pick up a wired Xbox Series X controller and when I was testing the games here through the Remo software it was very laggy so just to have a quick look at some of the Remo settings while Cyberpunk boots up here the software itself is very impressive we've got volume controls but the bandwidth and quality is only up to 40 megabits so it's much more similar to Parsec on that front and it also does support a second monitor so you can flip between two monitors as well cyberpunk does struggle a bit on this machine with the base rtx 4000 because geforce experience is supported we did switch off of the remo software and onto moonlight here so you do need to install the quadro experience rather than the geforce experience for this machine so just bear that in mind if you do want to use moonlight and obviously you have the parsec option as well looking at cyberpunk it does struggle somewhat no matter what I did with the settings it seems to be capped at 15 frames per second I'm not sure whether this is an issue with the rig itself or whether it's an issue in cyberpunk I only got this frame cap issue in cyberpunk so I can only hope that when they update it with 1.2 that this frame cap is removed as I said regardless of what settings I chose what levels what resolution it always seemed to be capped at this 15 to 18 fps and I do remember seeing some issues about this online previously with a different game. So hopefully this is just a software issue and they will patch it soon. 
even at 15 frames per second it is actually playable although it's not the great experience let's have a look at control next so i did have the settings maxed out with full ray tracing here and we can see we're getting dips into the 20 frames per second with most of the gameplay being 30 frames per second or above this is running at 1440 or 1440p so you will get much better frames per second if you're running at 1080 but even with those dips down into the 20 frames per second you must admit the control is running extremely well here and to be honest even with those dips into the 20s i wasn't really paying that much attention and it did feel smooth enough to me whilst playing input lag wise i did not notice anything i was using the xbox controller wired here via moonlight and it was not an issue at all and just look at those explosion effects with the full ray tracing and quality on high it really did play extraordinarily well. The control with full ray tracing doing the Quadro RTX 4000, just this here. So good old favourite of Grand Theft Auto 5, again with high settings pretty much everything maxed out. We're getting 60 frames per second most of the time and just look at those water effects even when we're going around looking at the boat. We're getting well over 60 frames per second and the GPU in the high 90s most of the time, but more than capable of this game at 1440. Again, I did not get any input lag and my ping to the servers sitting around 30 to 40 milliseconds was absolutely fine. Again, if you're going to be running at 1080 rather than 1440, then you're not going to have an issue. If you did want to pay a little bit extra, you could stick the second RTX 4000 in there, but I'm not sure that a lot of these games would actually utilise two GPUs at once. So don't waste your money. Final game that we're going to look at is Watch Dogs Legion. This has just got the online update, so one, I wanted to test out the online gameplay, and two, I wanted to see with full ray tracing just how well this game ran. So, excuse the language, I'll try and reduce it as much as possible here. But we can see again with high settings, full ray tracing at 1440, it was holding 30 frames per second and above quite happily. And look at those ray tracing effects. Legion is a fantastic showcase for RTX. Once again, we can see some of those performance dips down into the 20s, but most of the time it's still playing smooth and extremely accurate. As accurate as can be with a controller anyway. But again, look at those ray tracing effects in the glass and just of the environment around. So this is an extremely capable rig. I have been very impressed with Trezorio. Just the startup time takes two to three minutes in the first instance. And if you archive it, it can take a minute or two longer. But all in all, if you're looking for a virtual computer in Europe, then Trezorio is a fantastic option. Just be aware that pretty much everything is fully automated right now. Support does seem to be quite slow to get to responses. And it is a pay-as-you-go service, so you need to top up in advance. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Trezorio and whether you're going to be signing up. Thanks for watching, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things cloud gaming, and we will see you next time.